Hi Year 10, uh, this is another video in the Religion, Peace and Conflict unit. This one's about forgiveness. So we've done all, mo most of the stuff about war in this unit. Um, and we're going to move on to these two lessons, one on forgiveness and one on reconciliation, which is very closely linked. Uh, they're not directly linked to the idea of war, but they are, of course, linked to the idea of conflict and like, what happens after conflict, forgiving people after conflict. So there is an indirect link to war. And particularly when we look at reconciliation in our next lesson, that will be linked to war in a more direct way. Um, yeah, it's worth saying at the beginning that forgiveness is extremely important in Christianity, probably something you're aware of. But I'd say amongst the world religions, none focuses on this specific issue as much as Christianity does. Um, if you look in the Bible, in the New Testament, where it records Jesus' teachings, Jesus doesn't have much to say about some of the issues that we uh, discuss in our lesson. So he has nothing to say at all about same-sex marriage. He doesn't mention it once um, in the, in his teachings. He doesn't mention abort abortion or euthanasia, which we're going to look at in our next unit. He doesn't mention war, hardly at all, or at all, really. Um, what he does mention, though, is forgiveness, and he promotes it a lot, and he forgives people constantly in the Bible. And uh, that is where the Christian emphasis on forgiveness comes from Jesus himself. So it's a really big deal in Christianity. And sometimes something that people find their he hard to get their heads around is why Christians place so much importance on forgiveness. Sometimes even to the extent of forgiving people who other people might say don't deserve that forgiveness. Um, OK, let's begin by looking at a couple of reactions to forgiveness uh, from G. Walker and from Sally Dowler, both, both people who were... Uh, involved or victims of high case, high profile cases of crimes. So um, G. Walker uh, was a mother of somebody called Anthony Walker, a boy who was murdered in a racially motivated attack while waiting for a bus um, uh, in 2005. He was killed. There was no motive for the for the killing apart from a racist motive it, um, he was a completely innocent person um, and the the killers never uh, apologized admitted their crime or anything like this they were sent to prison um, but very publicly G Walker who was a Christian said that she forgave them and she this is a quote she said she said I had to I have to forgive them I can't feel anger and hatred because that is what killed my son so she's basically saying you know she she was the victim of anger and hatred. She doesn't want to continue that anger and hatred towards people. It's an interesting one. I'd like you to write down uh, these quotes, who they're from, what happened to these people, and just explain what they're saying in the quotes. I should say this whole lesson is just going to be stuff, just notes to write down. There's no worksheets or anything like that. It's just making notes as I, as I explain things. Next one, Sally Dowler. In 2002, Millie Dowler, a young girl was abducted and murdered by Levi Belfield, a man who would eventually be found to be a serial killer. After a very difficult trial, he was found guilty in 2011. After the trial, Sally Dowler, who was the mother of Millie Dowler, said, I hope that I hope whilst he is in prison, he is treated with the same brutality he dealt out to his victims and that his life is a living hell. So here is someone who didn't want to forgive, someone who felt that because of the pain that she had gone through, she hoped that that similar amount of suffering was um, happened to the killer, to the person who, who did the crime towards her. And you can understand that point of view. And that's often, I think, where people come in in this, in this topic is that they kind of feel if people have done horrific crimes, then why would we be, be forgiving those people? What would be the purpose? So there are two conflicting points of view, particularly that quote from Sally Dowler, it'd be good to write down because... It's quite sometimes quite difficult to give a philosophical reason for the anti-forgiveness point of view. Sometimes a quote like that is is strong because it really expresses the emotion that someone who's been a victim of such a horrible crime uh, might uh, feel. Okay, so what is forgiveness? Forgiveness means you need to write a definition down. Pardoning someone for something they have done wrong. Letting go of wrongs that have been done. So pardoning someone for something they've done wrong, letting go of wrongs have been done. It might be worth making a note of this. Christians believe in forgiveness, but that doesn't mean that Christians believe that no, that crimes should not be punished. Most Christians believe that there should be punishments for crimes. But the idea is that, so so for example, G. Walker didn't, she, she's not like she was saying her, her son's killers should not go to prison. They should be punished. But the idea is that once the punishment's in place, you don't, con 
continue to um, feel negatively towards those people. You wish them, you know, you 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 try to make it so that you wish them well. You put what they've done has done behind them, and you wish them well in the future. You let go of what's happened. So it's not the same as just having no punishment, forgiveness. It's a uh, it's okay. There is a punishment, um, and then but then you put it behind you. You you you've pardoned them for what they've done after the punishment. So that's what forgiveness is. Here's the case of G Walker in a little bit more detail. I want you to watch this video. Uh, I'll put a link to it on the um, in the information below the thing. I think that link there doesn't actually work. But there is a YouTube link that I'll put below the um, the video. Um, it's quite a good video for understanding where G Walker is coming from. If we were in the class, these are the questions we would talk about. Why did she forgive? Why might some people think it, she's wrong to forgive? Could you forgive in this situation? What I'd really like you to do is have down some notes about what happened in this situation, because it is a case study you can use in an exam question. What happened to Anthony Walker? And the reasons she gives for forgiving. And if you watch the video, you'll see. She talks about some Christian reasons to forgiving, for forgiving, some of which we'll look at later. So, for example, she talks about um, we expect to be forgiven. As, you know, as Christians, she says, she expects to be forgiven by God, so she must forgive other people. Well, we'll look at that later. Um, but we will also, but she also gives some reasons that are not specifically Christian and don't have, don't have to be a Christian to believe in them. For example, she talks quite movingly in the video about grief and um, anger being a heavy load to carry. And her point is that if you stay angry with the people who killed her son, it's just another negative thing to carry around with her. She's already got the, the sadness that comes with her son dying um, at such a young age. So she's saying she doesn't want to have to carry around as well as all that sadness, all the anger towards those people. So that's an interesting reason to talk about forgiveness, because she's basically talking about forgiving for the sake of herself, that almost, you know, for her, psychologically for her, it's better to forgive, because otherwise you're just living in this constant state of anger, as well as on top of all the grief that you're feeling after what happened. So in, as well as, in addition to the Christian reasons, she's got this kind of more practical reason of why you should forgive. Okay, that was our example. Um, and we're going to look at some more examples when we look at reconciliation, which is very closely linked to forgiveness. But for the time being, we're going to look at some quotes. So for these quotes, what I want you to do is you just need to write down each quote and then just next to it, explain what it means. And I'm going to talk through what these quote means. So these are all Christian quotes from the Bible. Um, and they're all different ways of explaining why forgiveness is so important to Christians. So here's the first quote. Uh, Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, and Peter was a follower of Jesus, I should say, one of his disciples. Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven, but 70 times seven. It's a really famous quote. And I think maybe in the video, uh, um, um, Anthony Walker's sister mentions that 70 times, seven times. So he's asked, do I forgive someone who sins against me seven times? And Jesus said, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, if you took that literally, that would be 490 times. So, you know, if you took it completely literally, you would be thinking that, well, OK, someone does something bad against me once, I forgive them. Twice, I forgive them. You know, 489, I forgive them. 490, I forgive them. And then 491, I don't forgive them. Well, that's not quite what Jesus meant, as you might expect. It seems like 70 times 7 was a kind of a way of representing at that time a big number, like a huge number of times. So this means, so this is, with, this is quite a good quote to use because you can explain it. You can say, here, Jesus doesn't mean literally 70 times 7 times, but he means a never-ending amount of times. He means like a huge number of times. So in other words, this quote just means keep forgiving people. However many times someone does wrong to you, keep forgiving them. Forgive again and again and again. So that's the first one. Quote two, Father forgive them for they know not what they are doing. One of the most famous quotes in the Bible from Luke 23, 34. Now the key thing here is that this is said by Jesus and it is said while he is being crucified. Uh, and this is another good quote to use because, again, it's got a strong explanation to it. So while he is being crucified, while he is dying on the cross, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. He's talking to God the Father. For they know not what they are doing. They don't know what they're doing. He, 
obviously the people did know what they were doing but in other words he's saying these people don't know how wrong this acting is they're not they're not aware of what a terrible crime they're committing they're deluded that kind of thing now why is it such an important quote well if you think about it this is jesus forgiving people at the moment when they're unjustly killing him you know he's not being guilty of any crime he's being killed by these people but still he's forgiving people at the time that they're killing him for christians this shows well if jesus can forgive in that situation then we should be able to forgive in them in the more everyday situations that we face you know we have bad stuff things might happen to us people might treat us unjustly but jesus gives us the ultimate example of, of to follow that you should, um, uh, that he could even forgive when he was being killed. At the moment he's being killed, he could even forgive those people. So it shows that really Christians believe that the way to act is always how Jesus acted. You should follow Jesus as much as you can. He forgave when he was being killed, so we should be able to forgive in any situation we find ourselves in. Okay, uh, third one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Matthew 6.14 So this is something Jesus says. For if you forgive other people when you, they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now this brings to mind a famous prayer in Christianity called the Lord's Prayer. You may know this prayer. It's, it's uh, the most famous Christian prayer and it's the only prayer that Jesus specifically give, tells people to pray in the Bible. And in that, in that prayer it says... Um, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. They, they say that to God. And that expresses the same meaning as this, is that Christians believe that to, in order to get to heaven when they die, they need to be forgiven by God. So it's a very important belief in Christianity. Christians think that everybody has done things wrong. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect enough to be able to go to heaven when they die through their own actions. When we look at the Christianity unit, we'll look at this in more detail. But no one is, you know, to, the idea is that to get to heaven without forgiveness, you'd need to be perfect. You need to have done nothing wrong. But no one's done nothing wrong. Therefore, um, you need to be forgiven for the things you've done wrong to go by God for the things you've done wrong in order to get to heaven. So this is what this quote is talking about. It's saying if you want God to forgive you the things you've done wrong, then you should forgive other people. Think things they've, they've done wrong. Now some people have a problem with quote, I'll just mention this, you might want to make a note of it as a kind of criticism. Some people might say, well hold on, we might need to be forgiven, but we, you know, we might have only done small things wrong, you know, a little bit of selfishness, not always being kind, not, you know, not always doing, you know, exactly the right thing every time, you know, minor things we may have done wrong. And then, and, and then this quote is saying, to be forgiven for that, you should forgive whatever anyone does to you. So if someone murders a family member, you should forgive them so that you can be forgiven for the tiny things that you've done wrong in your life. Some people think that seems a bit ridiculous or unfair. It's an interesting point. But uh, that's the basic point it's making, is that we need to be forgiven, so we need to forgive other people. Last quote. Again, a quote from Jesus, from Luke 17.3. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Now, this isn't only referring literally to people's brothers. It just means other people. If your brother sins, rebuke him. So that means if he does, someone does something wrong, tell him off. Rebuke means tell him off. Say it's wrong. Criticise him. If he repents, forgive him. Now, to repent means to express regret and sorrow, sorrow for what you've done. So in other words, it's saying if someone does something wrong, you should tell them off, make clear that what they've done is wrong. If they repent, if they say sorry, if they express regret for what they've done, you should forgive them. So here gives a slightly different impression, because this quote is saying that, yes, we should forgive people, but if only if they um, ask for forgiveness, express regret, say what they've done is wrong. I think it's quite an interesting idea. So the other three are just straightforwardly forgiveness is important but this one is saying look if someone does something wrong criticize them but then if they if they express regret for it if they say they're sorry then you forgive okay so those are the three uh the four christian co quotes you really need to know these quotes the top one and the top left hand side um you don't need the whole thing you could simply have 
you know, you explain what happened. Peter came to Jesus, asked how many times to forgive, and then you know this bit. I tell you not seven times, but 70 times seven. It's fine if you just know that bit. The others you need to know by heart, because uh, it's really important quotes and fairly straightforward. The great, best thing about this for exam purposes is that each one has a kind of good explanation that goes along with it. it it's not just one of those cases where you're kind of saying the quote and then your explanation just seems to be re-saying re the quote. Everyone's got a kind of um, a point that goes along. I would like you to, as we did in the last lesson, kind of make a, write a plan of how you'd answer a six mark, six mark question, or you can write the whole six mark question out, it's fine. Just make sure you've got three of those quotes down and you know what you're going to say. Explain Christian attitudes to forgiveness. So all you do is say, well, one reason why Christians think forgiveness is important is because of what Jesus says when he's crucified. And then you say, when Jesus was crucified, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And then you explain what this means for Christians, where it shows that Christians should always forgive people because Jesus was willing to forgive people at the moment when he was being killed. Then you do the next one. You'd say another reason Christians forgive people is because they think that they need to forgive people if they want to go to heaven when they die. You put the quote down. If you forgive people, your Father in heaven will forgive you, or whatever it says. I haven't got it in front of me right now. The one from the last slide. And then you explain, well, Christians believe that every person needs to be forgiven to get to heaven. And that if you want to be forgiven, you need to forgive others. And then you can do the third one. Some Christians believe that um, it's important to forgive people, but only if they express regret for what they've done. And you use that quote, if your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Then you explain, this makes some Christians believe that forgiveness is important, but only if the person expresses regret for what they've done. Okay, so that's most of what we want to say about Christian views about forgiveness and why it's so important to Christians. I just want to say a couple of, one thing at the end, which is about, well, if you've got 50 mark on this, what kind of points of view can you put against forgiveness? Why might people be against forgiveness? Because it kind of seems like, Christians are given a lot of reasons to be for it. There's a lot of quotes. You can really explain them well. But why might people be against it? We've seen a couple of things already. We saw that quote from Sally Dowler. Nice, straightforward quote. A very a very passionate quote. Uh, but very straightforward to understand about um, why she doesn't think forgiveness is a good thing. Or why she doesn't think that in her case she wants to forgive. We also saw that we could use you know, criticism we could have of that idea of if you want to be forgiven, forgive other people. Because um, you might say, well, yeah, but I'm only, I only need to be forgiven for tiny things. I've only done small things wrong during my life. Does that mean I need to forgive someone who's done something terrible towards me? Uh, they have things you might want to write down. Just make sure you've got three or four good reasons to say that forgiveness is wrong. Um, so put that as a subtitle. Why might some people say that forgiving is not always the right thing to do? So here are some reasons. If everyone forgave and did nothing, then evils could continue. So you could say, like, you know, um, we need to, if you just come constantly forgive, then people won't stop doing bad things. Now, Christians would have a problem with that idea because they would say, well, we're not saying that when you forgive that you should not do, you should not stop the person or punish them in any way. They would be for punishment. They would just say that we should punish and then forgive. But that's, you know, it's a point of view. To a bully, they might consider weakness, forgiveness a sign of weakness. Forgiving constantly will make people walk over you. And this has been a criticism of uh, Christianity in the past, that Christianity encourages people to be kind of like doormats. People walk all over them because they just say, they just forgive people constantly. And even if you, this criticism could even be made if we take into account that Christians think people should be punished for their crimes. You could be like, well, yes, Christians believe in punishment, but they're always giving people another chance. They're always kind of being understanding towards them. If you want to stop people walking all over, you need to take a stand against what they're doing. It's wrong. Say it's wrong. Uh, again, we need to make a stand in some way to show disapproval, or the same action may happen again. So if you're not showing strong enough disapproval of actions, you're just open to it happening again. Some acts cannot and should not be forgiven. You know, you might think about like serial killers, uh, people like Hitler. Can we really? Are there some crimes that are just completely unforgivable? That's an interesting point of view. Uh, it might seem obscene or wrong for some people to want to forgive someone as who did things as evil as that, what Adolf Hitler did. You cannot pretend to have forgiven. It has to come from within you. This is an interesting point because sometimes I've heard this happen, heard this said that Christians can be accused of kind of saying that they forgive people 
when really forgiveness is something that has to be a deep thing within your heart. You might, as a Christian, you might have been taught, oh, Jesus says forgive people. So you might say, well, I forgive, you know, whatever happens, I forgive this person. But can that, perhaps it's just a lie. Perhaps you, you don't actually feel that in your heart. Perhaps you still have hatred for that person. You, can you just force yourself, because you've been told it's good, to forgive people? Maybe to forgive, you have to really have to feel it deep down within you. So maybe it's not actually your choice whether you, you forgive or not. Maybe it's something that happens within yourself and you can't control it. Uh, retribution is one of the four aims of punishment. This uh, comes from previously uh, in uh, this course. We used to do stuff about punishment. We did some of this stuff um, in year nine, actually, when we did about um, the death penalty and why do we punish criminals and stuff. But... Uh, uh, what, there are different people think there are different aims of punishment and some people retribution retribution is taking revenge is one of the aims of punishment so some people would say the point of punishment is to is for something bad to happen to that person in order to um to punish them for their crime for christians they're much more likely to see the aim of punishment to be something like reform reform means to make them a better person so you send someone to prison to try and mend their ways, to make to give them some time out of society to become a better person so they can go back into society a better person. But some people say, actually, no, the point of punishment is to take revenge on that person. They need something bad to happen to them for what's happened to, to them. And that is against forgiveness, because it's saying, no, they need we need revenge. Some religious people might say it's God's role to forgive, not ours. That is for God to do. Yes, God should forgive people because he's... Uh, all ben omnibenevolent, but it's not something we can do. Uh, lastly, kind of maybe tying in with that quote from this, that Sally Dowler said, some people might say it's unnatural to forgive someone who's harmed or killed a loved one. Forgiving could be seen as an insult to that per person's memory. So some people would say, if you really, if you have a loved one that you really care about and someone kills them, you cannot forgive that person. It's wrong to forgive the person who harmed them because, um, you know, it's an insult or a... Uh, Un, uh, kind of going against the natural feelings you have to forgive that person. So there is a series of reasons, make sure you have three or four, a series of reasons why people might think it's wrong to forgive. Okay, uh, thank you.